Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love Hour Podcast. I'm your host, Miss Kevin Stage, and I'm joined by my husband and co-host. The Kevin Stage. The Kev on stage. Welcome to the podcast. If it is your first time joining us, the podcast, uh, the Love Hour podcast is a place where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of happiness, and we just be spilling all the tea in our relationship. Oh, my man, I spill whiskey. Whiskey. <laughs> um, we are not relationship counselors. Or, whoa. Oh, sorry, Josh. Whoa, we're throwing shoes. Sorry. We are not relationship counselors or- I am. Um, th- you are. No, where I'm you not. get your credentials? I ain't got no license. I ain't even got no driver's license. Hello? Um, <laughs> did you pay that ticket? When yes. they said they were okay, that was a total. My license was suspended again. Yes, I just want to make sure. Just a criminal, guys. Uh, Stone yes, cold again. criminal. Um, criminal. Uh, thank you for joining us. Like I said, we are not relationship counselors or therapists. This is solely for entertainment purposes only. Um, however, we be sharing some good information. I agree. And we finna have, and we finna. Yep. Finna. And we finna have some really great guests lined up through, um, let's say, middle of November um, yes. or so through the holidays. It'll probably just be us. Um, but I plan on having like some really bomb guests. So I'm like super excited about that. Um, and as always, the show is ad supported. Yes. Um, so. Can I ask the audience yes. something? Sure. I already know what the question's going to be. Melissa and I have been talking. The bonus episodes have ended, if you've been yes. watching. I think we ran out maybe a week or two ago. Sure. I have been suggesting to Melissa Fredericks to do a Patreon for the Love Hour for the people who like more love, more hours. <laughs> that would be um, not ad-supported because you would be paying for it. Yes. Uh, the other option... Uh, because the people are wanting us to do more ads on the Love Hour. Melissa's like, enough. Mm-hmm. Like, enough is enough. So the option is to have another show that's ad-supported or a Patreon where you can pay a small amount. Yes. That wouldn't be ad-supported. What would be more interesting to you, the viewer? Can we make sure we do a post for that, um, which you guys would like? I think that's a fair question. And one more thing I want to say. Okay. One of the things I love about Patreon from Righteous and Ratchet you can talk more freely mm. because it ain't out to the public public. It's just for your ardent supporters. You're not worried about being canceled and stuff. You could be you could talk freely and people aren't there. People are not paying more just to catch you up and expose sure. you. So but somebody's always doing that. But that no, I agree. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I'm always leery regardless. Yeah. Um, but I definitely understand what you're saying. I think that is a great question. And I'm happy that you posed it. Um, because what I was going to say is we're so appreciative of your support, meaning you, the audience, the viewer, the listener, um, of your support of the podcast, which has allowed us to have the ads on the show. Um, And so we are grateful for that. But with that said, because I am not taxing you, meaning I am not doing a Patreon, we do have to have the ads. Yes. So um, So you can't have it both ways. So you can't have it both ways. It's like telling a TV show, I want to watch this TV. You can't be in the podcast. Enough of the commercials. Yeah, you can't be in the podcast. Production. I ain't paying for production. Right. Well, then you got to walk. Watch you the can't commercial. be in the comments about enough of the ads. Because you know what about me? Like I watch Hulu and I, the commercials were on and they hey, you want to pay $10 a month? You ain't got to pay for no commercial. I was like, bet. Right. So there could be a version where you, uh, Patreon, where you can have the this episode without ads. Yeah. If you're so, paying for that. Let me know what y'all want to do and that's what we're going to do. How about that? You either pay or listen. <laughs> All right. All right. Moving on. We're going to talk about this or that. It's a fun little that segment. That or this. That or this with Kevin Liss. Um, fun little segment that we How just do. How many months and weeks in a row are you going to continue to say it incorrectly? You know what? In my mind, it is the correct way because I created the segment. But the people have chosen. Uh, so, But anyway, I just can't. I don't do it on purpose. I just really can't get mm-hmm. it out of just my Just like you be saying menstruation. That child. <laughs> Every For time years. you say it, I'm like. For well, years. I can't tell a woman about her body. Child. Um, I can't they were like Melissa, and I'm like, I oh, know I do know better. Only just... labias can le- legislate labias. Hello. All right, see you later. <laughs> Is that a slogan? To so, or no. did you just make it up right now? Low yeah. key, I was like, I'm not mad at you it ain't all got the no way. Labias, then shut up. I agree, and you used right, labia. That was labia. Good. Them little lips. Hello, little. Would lips. you rather lose the ability to lie? <laughs> 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 That's why I'm stopping. Uh, yeah. That's why I'm stopping now <laughs> to do it nah, over. Leave it. Leave it. No. <laughs> leave because, it. No. Leave it. This no, is she, all I have. She can, but what I'm saying, when she tries to cut and just do it on Instagram, it it's is. It's going to be like. It's, <laughs> yes. It's a little liquor. 
There's a little licky licky. Or it's you talking over me. I'm sorry, just okay, okay. If you had a show by yourself, you wouldn't have to worry about this. I'm going to punch Patreon. you. Patreon. <laughs> Would you rather lose the ability to lie or believe everything that you're told? The world goes on as usual. You'll have people you trust and many you don't. You, can't, you also can't avoid speaking to certain people or have people speak to others for you. Man, I don't really be lying that much. I don't either. But earlier in my life, it was very valuable. Hello? So I'm going to make an adjustment and say for your whole life. <sighs> Wait, lose the ability to lie for your whole life? Yeah. Oh, I'm a, I was this. That was kind of my assumed. I thought it was going forward. Oh, you meant going back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Retro no, no, no. It can't be retroactive. It's just moving okay, forward. Going forward. Or believe man. everything that you're told. I'm so skeptical about everything, man. I, I just assume people are lying and stuff ain't true. And this has really served me better than believing things. I think I want to go into the world where I believe everything that I'm told. Mm. I think the reason why is because. That's your way, but baby. Hall. It is that. Mm -hmm. It is a much better childlike existence. <laughs> if I believe that everything you are telling me is true, there's no malintent. There's no ill intent. You are not lying. You are not being manipulative. It is such a. It is a more peaceful existence to not have to second guess other people. Yeah. Because and you want to believe people that you do. And the fact that you don't, it makes you leery of people. It makes you yeah. not want to be friends with people. It's just, it's stressful. But people be lying though. I know. But imagine a world where you didn't know better. We were just arguing about that. In people the would chat. just be like, God bless mm -hmm. your little heart. You're so sweet. God and I would be you. like, it's so great. Thank you. God bless me. He did, didn't he? In our group chat for the Real Comedians, somebody put in there, like, Beyond Meat has all these, whatever, mm -hmm. um, extra chemicals. And Tony was like, man, that's probably just the meat industry. That's what I'm like saying. And I was just like, man, first of all, there's nothing you can do. Nothing. Or eat. No. Everything's bad and wrong. Uh, to answer the question, I probably, I'd rather just be willfully unaware that people are lying yeah and just uh what is it? the ignorance is bliss or negligence yeah, is bliss? ignorance is bliss ignorance is bliss i don't be lying so i losing the ability to lie doesn't bother me I sometimes agree. i don't want to tell my kids the whole truth right away because i don't want to hear their mouth and now i figure out why my, my parents say we'll see mm -hmm. it's because they just didn't want to talk to you yeah can we do this we'll see the answer is no but if i tell you that now you're gonna have further questions ain't nobody yeah, got time for like, that yeah, that's the truth anyway so we'll, they say we'll see um was that yeah. your answer I, i'd rather i'd rather lose the ability to lie lose the ability to lie are yeah. you giving an answer joshua Josh don't be answering oh same so that's all josh ever do probably saying probably saying oh probably serena saying. i think that was oh no i think that's the best one josh wearing nike and adidas by the way he's young i'm not on camera why you gotta air me out what's below I do that all the time uh, you don't care though Generation X. is it Oh, What's above millennials? Either. Not baby boomers or Generation Y. Z? I don't know. Oh. Okay, sorry. I think that they weren't That's such a big deal when we were growing up, and it just isn't. It really was. Our kids will wear Nike no, it's fine. shoes, Adidas socks, Under Armour shirts. Nobody short, cares anymore. Puma shirt and be like, what do you, I don't even, I didn't even know these were logos. No. Speaking I of I want to say something real quick about that. Melissa bought JoJo a Trapper Keeper. And she called her a trapper keeper. He was like, what? He was, too. What like, is this a is trapper? a binder. He was like, nah, boy, we used to call her a trapper keeper. He was like, but what did it trap? We were like, go to bed. <laughs> Don't, will you let us live our life in the early 90s where we loved everything? Yeah, he literally was like, why do you call it that? That's dumb. What does it trap? What does it keep? You remember how much of a status symbol oh, yeah. a trapper keeper trapper was? Trapper keepers were amazing. And... Yeah, oh, I was the Velcro was so loud on that. It was. He doesn't use it anymore. No, you no, know, it took up too much space in his backpack after like three days. They don't have no cool stuff. No. Um, but speaking of shopping, we want to tell you about Honey. They are sponsoring the podcast today. They are phenomenal, and I'll tell you why. Because you get to save dollars. And who does not want to save their hard-earned dollars and allow those hard-earned dollars to stay in their pocket, in their wallet, in their pocketbook, just a little bit 
longer. So we use um, Honey. You can go on. Okay, so this is a great thing about it. You go onto their website and they have all of these like discount codes, right? And you'd be like, well, I don't understand, child. What's the good thing about it? But once you have your membership, mm -hmm, follow me, you get certain uh, privileges activated. Hey, come on. Is in that here. not a whole oh, word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, that yeah, not yeah. a whole word? That's oh. a whole entire word. So when you look on there, you'll see Honey members only promo code, and that's only activated with your membership. And that's when the real dollars are saved. Okay. So just make sure you do that because I'd be liking to keep my dollars. Nine times out of 10 online shopping beats going to the store, not nine times out of 10, 10 11 times Man. out of 10. Online, Online shopping beats. That. Honey is a free browser extension that saves you money everywhere you shop online. Honey find coupon finds coupon codes and other discounts across the web and automatically applies them. That is fan fantastic listen there's no real reason not to use honey it's free to use installs on your computer in just two clicks clicks and it'll save you money so you can treat yourself to something nice get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash love love that's joinhoney.com slash love love okay let's get into today's um topic all right, so today what we want to do is talk about communication. Okay. Communication is something that is required really in any relationship, mm -hmm. um, whether that's a work relationship, uh, intimate relationship, a relationship with your children, any relationship requires communication. And oftentimes we always say things that are like really like vague and overarching, like communication is key. Com com communication is a building block to any um, relationship. And that's what's going to make a relationship. It's so vague. Tick. It's so vague and so almost like... Um, Untouch like what does that mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? Because as foundational as it truly is, we do not have the skill set to always have effective communication. Yes. And really effective communication is what's foundational in not just talking. Absolutely. But having effective, clear, um, concise communication that really um describes whatever it is you're getting at that you're feeling yes because a lot of times we could just be talking in circles or communication we're just yelling at each other and no one's hearing the other person we're I really think just effectiveness is so important because a lot of times we just be talking we just be talking i remember when we were going through our kev is not a vulnerable husband um moment one of the things you were saying is we never talk and i yes. just be like all we do is talk <laughs> and what you meant was our conversations never reach below the surface. How is your, how are you doing? How is your day? Mm -hmm. There's a part of that that you want, but what you needed from your husband was the sub layer beneath that. The heartstrings, the stuff everybody doesn't get to hear. The dermis and then the epidermis. And the epidermis, that's <laughs> sub, sub. I don't know if that's hepatoma. actually the right word, but. Um, we've watched a lot of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> um, so, yes. How, how, what's the first step? Because I feel like this is very important and it is, always talked about as a as a line item yes but as a it's line not item. like what is the practicality in effective communication for a marriage so what i think that number one we have to identify like what are the hardships to communication mm -hmm. and number one i think it is the idea that we are sparing our spouse or anyone's feelings yes so i don't always want to be honest about how I'm feeling because I don't want to hurt your feelings. That's the first thing I was going to say, and I didn't even read your notes. Okay, tell me. I was going to say it in a different way. We Now, the lying ability, I don't know if we lie like Melissa, like a, a overt like lie, mm -hmm. like I'm going to tell you something that's obviously not true, but I definitely feel like we have lies of omission. Yes. You know, simple stuff like, is the food too salty? No. <laughs> because I don't want to tell you that everything but i always can taste it oh it just feels like you cook it in the ocean that's all and i <laughs> I, I, what's funny about that is I just read I don't actually uh, well that's not true sometimes I do but I also get notifications when people respond on YouTube which I need to turn off but regardless I get them at this point and someone was like oh my gosh Melissa I am the same it is either not seasoned or oh, like I just got a YouTube notification right now or over seasoned there is no, no in, between. in between that is it and yesterday so I made these black eyed peas totally sidebar we'll come back first of all they were so bomb but I am afraid that today they're going to be too salty. 
Because they sit? Because they sat overnight. I'll, I'll tell you how it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig in once I'm we gonna uh, finish I'm going to make them again. Here. I'm going to make them keep again. Keep making them. Um, keep, keep practicing. Yeah, I'm going to make them again tonight, but I'm going to do something a little bit different because all mm. of that sodium is just not... Okay, we're 36 years old. This is why men live long, by the way, is because women be thinking about this is a lot of I'm here sodium. for a good time, not a long time. Hello? Okay, go back. Take me two, three years so off. I can eat them black eyed peas. Biomission. Biomission is probably the first mistake in marriage. Yes. Early in our marriage, um, I, I didn't know what to say or how to say it. So I just didn't say stuff uh, for a long time. And that allows you to uh, or allows your partner to make <clears throat> do stuff that is upsetting to you, bothers you. Um, then you start to, you know, resentment builds if, if untreated. And this is the other thing. I, uh, we're going to have someone on the podcast that can talk to the Gottman Institute. And I've studied it a little bit, but I want someone who's like an actual expert on it. But he has like What's the Gottman five. Institute? OK, so he has like five or seven um, horsemen that are mm-hmm. indicators of divorce. Mm-hmm. And that's what he calls them. And the um, and he can predict divorce with his indicators up to like. 87 percent or Dang. something like that like he has a pretty high so you going to a counseling with him or you take a test you can take well this the uh what you call it, i think it's like an assessment okay um and then he just talks about him and breaks him down so he has like seven one of the biggest um contributors are resentment and contempt yes and contempt i believe the definition is when anger meets disgust mm-hmm. and that is contempt and that's when you are um condescending to your spouse yep. that's when eye rolling comes into place that is when um i don't it is no longer about and i just talked about this in my life for my book club booze shout out to y'all book club uh, blue i cannot do booze. it i always um, say blues it is more than just this action upsets me it's more than just I, we need to work on this because our communication is bad contempt becomes you are the problem yes you have to go yes i'm miserable and this relationship is miserable because i'm in it with you right and once you're at that point that's when like that's the one the highest indicator of um divorce not that like all hope is lost but that is one of the biggest indicators Got of it. divorce and i believe that is only preceded by resentment yes I think one thing's interesting, and I probably still do this, and you be knowing it, but like, for example, I have to get up and go to the gym at five o'clock in the morning <laughs> with Greg, right? You know what I'm about to say? Yes. Okay. You are on a, I must watch every episode of Grey's Anatomy ever created. <laughs> okay. We watched uh, something last night, and then Melissa's like, let me just turn on one episode of Grey's. And I'm like, because ah. I cannot go to sleep if the TV's on. Like, I have to be. 27 percent more tired to fall asleep <laughs> if the tv's on i mean I, obviously i can fall asleep but when i need to go to bed lights off tv off yeah melissa likes to fall asleep to the tv on. let's watch a movie kev okay turn on <laughs> sometimes i like the black background noise okay so now this morning i'm supposed to meet greg at the gym at 5 30 so i can be strong and healthy and I'm so tired because I want to stay up with my wife and enjoy something she enjoys, which is Grey's Anatomy. But I'm also tired, and I know if I stay up with her, I'm gonna, it's going to be hard for me to do everything I want to do. So what do I end up doing? Watching Grey's Anatomy. And this morning, I wake up late, and now I don't go to the gym on time. Greg, like, I'm here on the bench, and I'm like, I just opened my eyes because I press snooze instead of mm-hmm. – uh, I mean, I press stop instead of snooze because I would have been asleep an hour earlier. All that – comes from communication yes because i can't tell you i mean i can but i don't want to tell you Liz, i want i need to go to bed i tell you to go to bed i know and i tell you i can't go to bed if the tv's on (laughs) so i'll be trying you'll be like okay have you seen that Mm. okay and i'll be like leave me alone so this morning i was at the gym mad like now i'm gonna miss out on 30 minutes of cardio because i'm late to the gym and i literally thought about i'm gonna sleep in the other room when she wants to watch grace because it's not every day it's actually very rare that our tired is not matched, but you also don't have to get up as early as I do. So I was literally thinking like, how do I have this conversation with her that says, be sleepy when I'm sleepy? <laughs> I won't be sleepy when you're sleepy. <laughs> but Kevin ain't telling all the way true. I'm gonna just add this little caveat. I watched half of one episode, went to turn off the TV and you were like, I ain't tired. You can watch another episode. I, that's the omission. Oh, okay. Because I want to, which is 
the truth. I want to have something to do with you that you enjoy more than I enjoy. Should I go to sleep? I'll be trying to. But but secretly, I, f- I feel bad for, for going to sleep. Don't feel bad. I uh, want to express my feelings to you. You are you're trying to jump to the end of it. I them. am trying to jump to the end of it because I want you to go to sleep. I'm gonna go to sleep in the boys' room then. Go to sleep in the boys' room. Right, have sex with me first because I don't want to miss out on that. <laughs> don't, and that's my fear in life. I go sleep in there, then she, and then I can't. Run There's her, the truth. I can't grab her booty. It ain't about uh, watching what I'm. <laughs> and it is not about watching what I'm watching. You just said your whole truth and nothing but the truth. Um, so I also want to tell you about Legacy Box, which is a way to continue your legacy through photo albums. Or yes. I don't know if photo albums Video, is really a, Videos. Thank home you. video is so key. Because technology has evolved. Yes. And you can't always use and look at old video footage because no. VCRs are no longer a thing. So we were cleaning out Melissa's closet the other day, and I found some mini DV tapes of Clayton and Earl, which was the first play I ever did with Ant uh, before the Playmakers and all that stuff. And I realized that because I don't have a mini DV camera or the software, there's no way to watch this. So yeah. I wanted to show the boys. And luckily, we had a legacy box there, so we've shipped it off now. And they'll take this video or old footage video footage and then um, format it so you can watch it. They yeah. put on a they DVD. They digitize it. Digitize it. That's the word I was looking for. So you can put on a DVD or um, a file and all that stuff. So now all these old memories that we thought were lost are now going to be found. And I can't wait for it to come back so I can show the boys, like, look what your dad looked like when he was thin. So the way that it works is you, they send you a box, you put your valuables in them, and don't worry, they, like, ser- or uh, serialize it, I think is the right word, like, itemize it so that way you know and they can keep track so your um, valuables, your precious items aren't lost. Um, mm-hmm. But then the, you, they, you input it into your legacy box, you send it off, and they will professionally digitize your moments on a thumb drive, digital download, or DVD. Yeah. There's yes. never been a better time to digitally preserve your memories. Visit LegacyBox.com today to get started. Plus, for a limited time, they're offering my listeners an exclusive discount. Go to LegacyBox.com slash love to get love. 40% off your first order. Again, that's LegacyBox.com slash love, love and save 40% off today. Get started preserving your past. This is a great gift for like moms and grandmas and stuff. Yes, because old people don't be knowing how to do nothing and they be they having all the good don't. memories. They really do. Um, we also want and to tell you about too. our podcast starter kit, Blue Chew. Um, we have been, re- actually, we've been recommending Blue Chew to like all the men. Oh, on oh yeah. The, Tony, um, Jay. Yeah. People who are married or in a committed relationship. People who Not are- you, Joshua. Not to Joshua. Or Doughboy. Doughboy. Doughboy's like, man, what was it? And I was like, yeah, man, uh, you should find a lover first. <laughs> <laughs> um, you go it's so easy because they take the embarrassment out of using something like blue chew where it is a performance enhancement um in the bay you want to perform best uh oh. so it is a performance enhancement don't worry it is not an indictment on your manhood so you no. do not have to have erectile dysfunction it's like creatine for your pain you just want to perform at a better level. Okay. You want to be better. It's just going into like hyperdrive. Yeah. And you'd uh, be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. They're made in the USA. And since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than and less embarrassing than going to a pharmacy. Right now, we've got a special deal for our offer for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use promo code Love Hour. Love Hour. Just pay $5 for shipping. Again, that's Blue Chew, just like the color. B-L-U-E, Chew.com. Promo code Love Hour. Love Hour. To try it free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Okay, so what are conversations that you feel are um, difficult to have? So I have money is often a difficult conversation Mm -hmm. to have, and sex is often a difficult conversation to have. And then there are those conversations where you just reach gridlock. Yes, I think um, especially with parenting, that's another thing. Parenting. Parenting, um, when you have different views on how something should be handled with the children, coming to an agreement. Because you realize if either of us were a single parent, you'd be raising that kid 100% the way you right. want to. But, you know, you're a parent based on how you were parented mm-hmm. and what your views on that, what you want to do the same as your parents or opposite of your parents. And I think those are probably the, the three big ones, yeah. probably sex, money. And then like I don't... Uh, 
gridlock that I don't. Yeah, I, I, can't I just mean gri- gridlock. Yeah, because I just mean those all encompassing um, things that are like some people may move. Like we moved a lot. Most people don't move out of state. Yeah, they stay where. And so, but that's a gridlock issue. We were definitely gridlocked. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, money. Or I guess we said money. Parenting could be one. Sex. Um, we said all these. We said, We're just going back and saying it okay, again. Well, you get it. Uh, <laughs> gridlock issues. Uh, Finances. No, no, no. I was going to say job. That can be one. Just mm-hmm. those type of issues. So the point is we all have those issues. So what? So steps to get um, beyond those or step to have like that effective communication. Number one is recognizing that avoidance doesn't work. Not only does it not work, I feel like avoidance enhances the problem say more the more you avoid something that problem just gets worse festers it festers it's like a uh a festering fester um because what happens is the if you're doing something that bothers me and i avoid to tell you about it you a are going to continue to do it yes and now b it's going to infuriate me more and more because it's not being it's like an untreated symptom and yes. it tends to be worse and now you as logic it, this doesn't make sense logically but it's what we do we start to feel like people are doing it on purpose. Oh, 100%. because uh, you don't. They can't possibly not know this doesn't bother yes. me. It's it, look at me. Look at my face. I know you've done this before, and I know I spit all over the place. <laughs> look at my face. You didn't see how I reacted. No, mm-hmm. because I don't know what's bothering you. I don't know that to goes, look to see that you are bothered. Right. I don't even interpret this as a bothering thing because this. I don't know that that bothers you. And I've tap danced on your nerves for stuff for a long time. Because I had no, no idea. idea. Just having a good old time. And I think that is the so, unfortunate so, so. truth. It goes back to um, that meme that we talked about before where you feel like not sharing your feelings sometimes is like keeping the peace. But we all have had or have seen witness those moments where something goes unsaid, unspoken for months, weeks, years at a time. And then suddenly you're arguing about why you won't remove your shoes in front of the door and also bringing up how you don't close the cabinets and you never make up the bed and also you didn't never got a good job that's why we are living in this small house and you're just like <laughs> how did we get here i'll just remove my shoes yes and it just because that's happened in our marriage yeah oh that happens it's like all old the geyser time. you yes. have stuff that you've been holding on to for a long time it's untreated and you just like anger vomit yeah and you anger vomit because your mind starts to connect them to the resentment. Yes. Like you do this, I don't like, you do that, I don't like. And that like. becomes and that year, narrative you, you tell yourself. Yeah, and and all of a sudden, you. everything makes sense. It's just you. Mm-hmm. You made them salty black eyed peas or not salty black eyed peas. What did you make that was salty the other day? That chicken. That chicken wasn't salty. No, it wasn't. <laughs> the but it was a potato. potatoes it was were a potato. salty. Um, the potatoes were salty. The chicken was not salty. Yeah, the potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken wasn't salty. I know. Oh well, I don't know what you had, but it wasn't salt. Listen, none of your daddy had it. I had it. Joe, Isaiah, all of us had it. None of us said it was salty except for you. So I'm not owning that. Everybody's terrified of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Potatoes I think, were salty, um, in the love hour this year, you talked about last year on the tour something bothered you and you held on to that. Yes, for, for way too many months. Many months, and then you start to. I remember you were saying this in the love hour. Uh, you were saying like he um. Now I feel like Kevin's like complicit Mm -hmm. and I'm just literally having no idea that you were even bothered by that at all, which further compounds the problem. Yes. Done with that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two, um, using a soft entry. I actually just learned this on, um, shut up. (laughs) I learned this on one of the, um, relationship Instagram pages that I uh, follow I can't remember if they actually call it a soft entry but that's what I'm going to call it and that basically means introing this is going to be a difficult conversation so listen yes Mm. if you will listen to uh, or you've attended the love hour live you know I said I used to be like okay so listen and that's kind of like we're about to have a difficult conversation and you could say things literally like okay so listen (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I have something to say. This is going to be difficult. Yes. I have something to say and it may strike a nerve with you and it is not my intent to make you angry, but I need, I want to have this conversation mm-hmm. and it just kind of like prepares the other person. Okay. This is going to be difficult. Oh, they actually don't want to get me upset. 
take a beat, calm down, and now we can have and engage in this conversation. Because when people are, it's like almost getting into a car accident where you're so unprepared. And that's how whiplash happens because mm-hmm. you were just relaxed. You had nothing going yeah. on. You weren't prepared for nothing. All of a sudden you're hit and you're like, whoa. Yeah. And that's what happens in relationships. We hit our spouses so unprepared and they are just like. Emotional whiplash. Emotional whiplash. I just made that up, but I thought it was pretty good. I think it is good. And I think Thank another you. thing, um, just that opening, just framing the conversation. Framing like that. the conversation. I think if you, I think one time, I think either you or I said, uh, this has been bothering me for a while. I say that sometimes. And I want to share it with you in an effort to move past it. Yes. And that is better than like, okay, look, man, when you do this, like, it's just, um, it's the lubrication to an argument. Yes, it is the lubrication You don't just want to go argument. jamming that. You got to, yeah, man, let me. Massage it massage in. Massage a little softer, softer. Put a little lube. Should have been a Lola episode. <laughs> Emotional lube on the conversation, and at least it prepares you for. Because I'm, for whatever reason, hearing that I don't intend this to hurt your feelings or any way it makes a huge difference. Yes, it prepares your mind to to you know. That's like they they teach you in business when you when you manage people. If you have to uh, like write somebody up or reprimand them to give them a compliment sandwich, sandwich, yeah. or is that it? Compliment sandwich. So. Uh, something nice, what they're doing wrong, finish with something nice. And I tried that and it works so much better than just, hey, you've done this wrong. Right. You know, even if the something nice is unrelated, like, yeah. man, the way you press that elevator button, <laughs> solid work. Hey, well. Every time you press it, what it do? Go to the floor. <laughs> now, you edited the video backwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the way you, you closed the it? trash clan was great. <laughs> so if you could edit them, you know what I mean? Yeah. But. Um, so out in the field, I tested it and it, it definitely works. And I think knowing that you, um, this conversation is hard, but I want to have it in an effort to make things better and smoother for us. And I don't want to continue to be angry with you for this. And I don't want to be angry with you without your knowledge. Yes. That is like, okay, I, cause I don't, and I, I, I really believe this. I don't think in marriages, people intend to hurt each other. And I don't think they go say. out like I'm, I just want to mess up her day or his day. I think a lot of times if it's in an unintentional and a lot of times people are un- unaware of how their actions are being per- perceived. Yes. I think we've a- actually had conversations where the you impact. said that, hey, I'm not sure if you even know that when you do this, it comes across like this. You know what I mean? I think one time you were saying something I was doing was coming across condescending. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people are not aware of how their actions are being interpreted. Yes. Because to you, it makes sense because you're the one doing sure. it. But how it's being interpreted is totally makes different. And I think what that soft entry does is that it does remind, does, does, um, it reminds your partner that we're on the same side. Yes. Because if I just come at you right away, my defenses are going to mm-hmm. flare and therefore I'm going to be defending my actions. And that's now you're you're the conversation's useless. Yes. Because instead of hearing here's what you've done that bothers me and, and here's how it makes me feel, yes. you feel attacked. Right. And we feel attacked just like with animals. They feel they feel attacked, their natural inclination right. is to And so attack instead back. of what what most of the time what we're really saying is I want you to address how whatever happened, whatever you did impacted me. Address my feelings. Yeah. But if you feel attacked, all we're going to do is respond to why I did what I did. And you know what else we do? And I do this all the time. You say, Kev, when you do this, it makes me feel this way. Well, I just did that one time because it was that one time. Yeah. That's why I did that. Yeah. No, no, actually, <laughs> it's a continually criminal right. enterprise. You have a RICO case in our in our marriage. Uh, because you know what? People don't want to get reprimanded. No. They don't want to be told they're wrong. They don't want their actions to be misinterpreted. So, And I know I'm guilty of this by like a lot. I want to clarify. Right. Here's what I did. This is not even what I meant. This is that I don't even want to really hear that I messed up because mm-hmm. I'm an amazing person <laughs> right. in most ways. So to hear that you're messing up, especially as a husband, and this is what I also do, we take it as an indictment of our entire husbandship. Mm-hmm. You know, you feel like if I, and I know I do this too. Am I a good husband? You're a good husband. Because I'm going to tell on yourself, talking, Chad. Like, Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, we want to point to the things we do well when we're brought, hey, right. you do this well. But I'm a great father. Mm-hmm. But also, I feel like our conversations are not, not good. But remember that time um, I was a good father? <laughs> yes. You're like, I remember we had this conversation. Yes. Um. And I was just like, but I'm a good dad. Like, yes, boy, but 
this is husband wife. Yes. Children, wake up. <laughs> Am I a great father? Please, Please go tell, tell me. Tell her so she can stop talking <laughs> about this other thing that I'm not good at. <laughs> um, so soft entry. I think yeah. we got that soft one pretty good. Soft entry is always good. You got to warm up. Yes, you have to warm it up. The person uh, to the idea of this is going to be a hard conversation. Okay, next one. Take a break. I was totally against this early in our marriage. Ah, uh, you were. I am so pro take a break. You are because you're avoidant. <laughs> you're conflict avoidant. And I'm going to tell you, this is a That's family one of, of the, origin thing. That is one of the downfalls of taking a break is sometimes you take a break and it's hard to reproach, reapproach mm-hmm. the situation take because the break. moment, yeah, because the moment has passed. So you do have to find that balance. But sometimes it is wise to take a break. Were you thinking of Hamilton? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. I grew up in a family that did not take a break. Yes. We got beef. Let's talk it out. Do not, do I mean, not if you can do that in a anger. healthy way. Well, yeah, we did that in a healthy way. Yeah. But when I married you, I was trying to do that and you were not. Your family did not approach problems like that. Mm-hmm. Not right or wrong. We just no, grew no, up no, differently. No. They approached problems like that, but they weren't necessarily done in a healthy way. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, Okay. So I remember, and this is early, early in our marriage when we lived in the dungeon, first apartment. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things we learned. You okay? I'm good. I have a whole gallon here. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So anyway, I remember, um, (laughs) let's drink so loud. Is, well, no, it's not just that. This is like as big as I yeah, am. So, so putting it, it's like, hold on, don't spill it. I'm much stronger than you, but not as strong as Greg. Oh, is that top of the line alkaline? It is. So anyway, um, you want some? Oh. One of the things actually while we're here that's really important to having a healthy diet and lifestyle is making sure you get plenty of water. Yes. Uh, while we're here, getting in shape is not just about losing weight. It's also about learning healthier habits and feeling better about yourself. It is always all about your inner monologues. Yes. I've been thinking about that. Tell me more. Uh, so much of your weight loss journey is your internal Mental. view of yourself. Yes. I look at Lizzo and I'm like, I need to love myself the way Lizzo loved herself. Yes. I could be happy at this weight yes. if I had Lizzo's point of view. And if you just tell yourself you're worth the, number one, love yourself at any state, any phase of your life. Mm-hmm. But if your intent is to lose weight, dealing with your inner monologue and telling yourself that... um I am worth the time and effort it takes for me to feel good about myself. I used to tell myself that all the time when I used to like learn how to do my makeup and get dressed and do my hair and things. Like I am worth the time and effort to get up 30 minutes early so that when I leave the house, I feel good about myself. And so if your intent is to lose weight, I am worth the time and effort it, it takes to get up an hour and a half early before the house because at the end of the day, this is my goal and I am worth that. I am worth that sacrifice. Um, And that's what Noom, it deals with not only um, the outside, but it deals with the inside. It deals with, we're dealing with your inner monologues and what you tell yourself. And it is convenient. It is easy. It is for those busy working people, busy working mamas, busy working entrepreneurs that don't have the time, great fathers that do not have the time to go to the gym, travel to the gym, do your workout and travel back. Sometimes you just need something that's quick, easy in your home. You can plug in, turn on your TV, do the little workout and move on with your life. Um, The great thing about Noom, it is a habit changing solution that helps users learn to develop a new relationship with food through personalized courses. Noom teaches you why you do the things you do and arms you with the tools to break the bad habits and replace them with better ones. Noom is not a diet. It is a healthy and easy stick to way of life. Yes. That's so important. You don't have to change it all in one day. Small steps make big progress. Sign up for your trial today. Today at Noom. That's N O O M dot com slash love hour. Love hour. What do you have to lose except the weight child? Visit Noom dot com slash love hour to love start hour. your trial today. Again, Noom dot com slash love hour. The last hour. weight loss program you will ever need. need. Okay, you were going to say something. I don't know. Okay, uh, I think the number one thing. Uh, oh, no, no. It was about how we argued. Yeah, okay. So early in our marriage, I try to apply my um, 
what is it called? The Your family you of origin. Family of origins approach to difficult dis- uh, discussions to you. Mm-hmm. You had a different point of view. And you said, Kevin, I don't want to talk about this tonight, right now. Um, let's talk about it in the morning. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay. And then we did. And you did. And I think uh, one thing that I've learned that is beneficial to that is when you are upset and in the moment, you are more likely to say something out of hurt or anger that is unrelated to the actual Mm -hmm. task at hand. And when you've let your emotions calm down, you're more likely able to deal with the actual problem, not the perceived problem in, you know, because of your emotions are high. hundred percent. That is the number one reason why I'm a huge proponent of taking a break, scheduling under time. But then you took a break for eight months. Um, but I never talked to you about it either. I just didn't say anything. That's a different issue. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Shut up, Joshua. <laughs> but I am a huge proponent of of taking a break. I think it is sometimes the number, it is a key component to honoring marriage. Yeah. Because sometimes in the heat of the moment, you forget that you and your spouse are on the same side and you might cuss them out clean out Mm -hmm. and then have to come back and apologize and that's not honoring because now you're arguing about the approach instead of the issue exactly exactly and that's just wasted time wasted time wasted effort ain't nothing get resolved that's why name calling is so useless it is because that's really never have you dumb you stupid that that, what what have i done that made you feel this way you know what i mean um luckily we haven't gotten to much of that uh, so the next one, work on, you made this up, non-ego first responses. I've had some ego first responses I, in my day. I, I want to say we all. What if you did an ego have first? Had e- ego first responses are feelings as well. Feelings. So deep in my feelings. When you feel like you are indicting, it's not about the action. I feel like it is about me, the person yeah. that is anytime I'm not prepared again, when you don't have that soft entry. So I feel like I have to defend whatever it is I'm doing. That's ego first. Yeah. I can't be wrong. Let me defend what I'm doing so you can come around to my side, my point of view. Yeah. That's basically what you're saying. Disregard your feelings so I can tell you whether you're actually wrong because this yes. is what I meant. And that's what I mean by like having the opportunity to deal with the feeling and not just what I did. I don't want to hear why you did this. I want to tell you regardless of why you did it, this is the impact. Right. So let's deal with that. Yes. Uh, that's great. I 100% agree. I have nothing else to add. You don't? Mm-mm. Okay. The next one, be specific. I go back and forth with this. Why? <laughs> we took breaths at the same time. Why just, do you go back and forth? I go back and forth. I think that being specific is important because you want to have those examples um, as to what's going on. Mm. But also... It's very easy to get into defending mode. Now I want to, well, this is an, well, give me an example. Here's an example. Well, this is why I did that. Well, here's another example. Well, this is why that actually doesn't help your point because this is why I did it with that time. Well, here's another. Well, actually, that was a little bit different than the prior two because of the child. Then why are we here? That's, I'd be doing that. And so you end up going to this, like, let me give you 5011 examples. Let me defend 5011 examples. That is useless. We are about to get nowhere in this time. I don't want to do that. And so that's why I go back and forth with the like, be specific. Got to be specific. Got to (laughs) I think be aggressive. Yes, I got to. Okay. One uh, thing. (laughs) So I am that person. Tell me on what date I did this. I need 11 examples. The date, the the 17 times, 17 times, 17 times, the exact day, the time, the year. And I will tell you why you're wrong. One thing that helped me with that is uh, I want to feel your (laughs) bicep. It's a little arm. Look at it. It's a baby. It's my muscles. (laughs) So one thing you said in one of our intense discussions last year, I believe, was, and this is what made me be like, ah, the examples don't really matter. When you do this, it makes me feel this way. Mm -hmm. Whether it's your intention or not, this is how I feel. And at that point, I was like, man, it actually doesn't matter what I was trying to do or trying to get across. What is happening is the unintended result. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the examples aren't specific. I feel like examples are specific sometimes so a person can know exactly what you're talking about. But when you are made to feel a way, whether I'm doing that on purpose or not, is... 
not really important right, right because right. it's making me feel this way sometimes that context matters yeah. um when you're having like and that's the part we're about having like adult conversations with hard conversations yeah. like being able to come to the table so you could be like oh i didn't realize that yes. that does color this a little bit different for me um so though sometimes that is important and sometimes it's like no you've done this 30 times right it doesn't matter. And and citing everyone is really a waste of our time because it's just going to make you mad. Because now you're like, well, you let me do it that many times. Did it really bother you? Why yeah, are you bringing up old right, stuff? Right, right. You know what I mean? That's that, that, that can be an issue as well. But I think part of it, it's also maturity. Yes. You can't have these hard. I feel like we, you know, having these hard, hard conversation is a personal maturity thing. It is. Uh, I need to be able to take constructive criticism feedback um about how my actions are mm -hmm. impacting you mm -hmm. you know people around you the same thing that happens at work all the time yeah. sometimes we do that as young at work all the time we do what's you said something um that was good that that was yeah that was good you said it the other day and it was about um i'm not responsible i'm always responsible for the impact what did you say uh whether it's, you know what I'm talking not, about? it's your intention you are responsible for the impact yes and i think that's the like the motto we have to take into yes. um, our relationships yes. is that um, we have to be accountable and responsible for our spouses, for the impact. For the I, I use this example for the men who are listening to the love hour. If you're trying to block a shot in basketball and you hit the person's arm, it is a foul. Whether you were trying to hit the ball or not, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's still a foul. Yes. Now, sometimes there are intentional fouls sure. where I mean to hurt you. And that is more egregious because I am in marriage and in sports. I meant to hurt you or I, that act is sure. not even a natural play. Mm -hmm. People are not always doing that. It's right. very rare in, mm -hmm. in basketball. But people are not always trying to foul you. I agree. Sometimes they just, man, I, I thought your arm was there, but you're still responsible for the action yes. that happened. And that's the same thing that happens in marriage. You're still responsible whether that was your intention or not. That was a whether good, you had good analogy. Finally, because they used to be on me about the sports ones. No, that was a good one. There's men. Listening. It was clear. It was clear. Yeah. Too. And I think that that's what, be, you know, Doughboy, I love him. Great friend of mine. But he always thinks that if he did not mean to do something, then he should not be held accountable for it. Well, I didn't mean that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're getting a car accident. I didn't mean to. Who means to get in a car accident? Right. You're still responsible for the for damage the, that for was the done. damage that happened, and that happens in relationship because people usually mean well. Like um, I was talking about this on fat shaming on Instagram uh, a couple weeks ago. I was like, uh, me and Dobo were talking about how people would be like, "Man, you you gaining weight? Like we don't know." And then somebody who was skinny was like, and also stop telling skinny people they need to eat. Yes. And I was like, that that's offensive? They're like, yeah, man, I don't, you th think I don't know? You think I want to be? Whatever it is, like, it's just, it makes them feel the same way I feel. Sure. And because I'm big and that's my desire to be thinner so I can fit into desirability politics, <laughs> um, that is my desire. But somebody like you, you get told eat more, you yeah. too skinny, you too skinny. I'm actually not offended, but I hear what you're saying. That's a personal thing. Yeah. But a lot of people your size <laughs> yeah, are offended are. by that because some people just can't wait. Can't get, I remember Jay Snow at 80. He's like, man, I'm so sick of that. People, be, You should get in the gym. You think I don't be in the gym? Yeah. You think I don't be eating? So again... People don't always know that's hurtful. Right. Sometimes they think it's giving a compliment. Sure. You know, but it don't, it don't matter. And that's what the love languages are really important because you have to love someone in the way that they perceive as love. And interpret love. love. And interpret love. And if they're not doing it, then you're just wasting motion. Actually, it's more dangerous than wasted because you think you're doing something Some, good. And you're not. And you're doing something that's hurting them. Yes. And that is way more dangerous than just something that has no you know sway either way. 100%. I feel like I'm having a great app. You are. The uh, last thing um, that I, I have two more things, but I'm only going to do one is making sure that we tell the difference between accommodation and compromise. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I think this is important in arguments is because if you're always accommodating, you will eventually that will eventually lead to resentment. Bingo, Melissa and, Fredericks. Um, then you're caught up kind of in the whole caught cycle up. all over again. And tell them what the difference yes, is. Yes. So a compromise is this actually just happened. Let's say between me and you? No. You'll follow me. Um, I want fifteen thousand. <laughs> My number is ten thousand. Kev wants fifteen. I'm thinking the number should have been closer to ten. We come to the table and I'm like, so what we gonna do? 
if we go up to 1250, that means he's losing because he's not getting his 15. And I'm also losing because I'm not getting my 10. We have both given something to now reach a new agreement. And that is a compromise. That is a true compromise. A true compromise. I heard this definition somewhere. Both sides should feel feel a little salty about it. Yes. Like, ah, I didn't get everything I wanted, but I also didn't have to give up everything I didn't want to give up. Right. That is a compromise. That is a true compromise. 50-50 if compromise. we are both moving toward each other equally, equally that we're both as moving much to, as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that's a compromise. An accommodation is he wants fifteen. Sorry, um, okay. I don't mind when you. I want it ten, and instead of fighting for the compromise, the twelve fifty, I agree to his fifteen. And you say that just this one time. That is an accommodation, and we have to be careful about making those, especially like in our relationships and arguments, whatever. We're always giving in mm -hmm. because eventually, five years of giving in will result in what did you call it? Argument vomit. Yeah, anger vomit. Uh, anger vomit. Yeah. Where, I mean, and you can kind of parallel your mind back to This Is Us, that This Is Us episode, um, or last se the whole last season. Mm. And as Beth is recalling moments in their relationship over the course of the season, you see her remembering how many times she's accommodated him. Right. How many times she has given in fully. Right. And now she wants something. He doesn't want to move. He's looking actually probably more. No, he's not looking for a compromise. He's looking for her to give in again to make the accommodation mm -hmm. again. And she's sick of it. And it's not just I'm sick of it for this one example. I'm now past tense. I'm retroactively upset at you for seven years of accommodations. That and I you made. know what the dangerous part is? A lot of times people think that they are compromising when one person is really just accommodating them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you think that that's oh this is they said they suggested it it's got to be fair yeah and how do you how do you tell the difference between accommodation and a compromise we just talked about it from from one relation I know in, in theory but sometimes we interpret interpret that as I think you have to well wait I don't understand your question the the, the I want to be clear the that I'm ten answered. and fifteen is a very clear cut accommodation versus compromise okay thing. but sometimes in marriages or relationships it's a, a comp it's a accommodation disguised as a compromise so give me an example so i can be clear when we moved and this didn't happen but this is how easily it could have happened okay when we moved one thing that was important to you is having a washing machine in the place mm -hmm. we we're going from a house to an apartment you already didn't really want to do that but your compromise was i'll move into an apartment with a washing machine an accommodation described as a compromise is you saying, you know what, I'm fine with that. Because I had found a cheaper apartment mm -hmm. that didn't have a washer and dryer. And I was like, but what about this? Because the washer and dryer is across the hallway. An accommodation would be you saying, okay, that's that's right. good enough. Where Let that me take feels it a like further. a compromise. Let me take you a step further. Okay. Because I even gave up some on. So my initial thought was uh, a bigger place i want a big space i wanted to have a washer and dryer i want all of these amenities i want all of these things and then you find something that's basically the total opposite of that but it's cheaper but it's cheaper so either one of us making an accommodation is you saying we're not going to live in this place that i found i'm going to find exactly what you need even though I everything that you want even though maybe that's difficult you're scared about if we can pay yeah, for it, all of those yeah. things or me doing that yeah. and instead we find melissa and literally you did say you can't have all of those things. In LA, all of those things equals $5,000 in rent. Do we have $5,000 in rent? No, we do not. So you need to decide what are the most important things to I you. said that? Yes. And I was like, washer and dryer is number one. Yes. Okay. So we found a place with the washer and dryer. So we're both giving, I'm saying, I can't have all of this. Let me take my pencil and erase some of these things. You're saying we're not going to live in the cheapest place because all you really care about is let's just get here. We could just live in a dungeon. Who cares? And we meet somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's like a true compromise yes. where we both came up off our initial positions and met somewhere and also part of that was where we lived and where we lived because the the where i wanted to live pasadena glendale area was like hey you got seven thousand dollars yes and that same house bigger in the valley was even cheaper. though they raising it every single time Shoot, they raising it because i fire on the valley uh so i think that's how to tell was that a good enough example i feel like was it, that a good people are gonna example? have to tell us but i feel like it it yeah, made okay. a lot more sense because okay. sometimes i just feel like a lot of times in relationships accommodations are made when that feel like compromises 
and the person is like, oh, cool. They said it was cool. Because mm-hmm. sometimes people are saying things that are cool because they just don't want to argue mm-hmm. or they don't want to come across as like And I think that difficult. comes back to um, effective communication as well. Like, number one, recognizing that there is a difference and then being like, this ain't no compromise. I just want you to know. Like, I'm just giving just pulling, in. Just pulling and actually saying yeah, that. Yeah, like, I just want you. I'm just giving in. Like, I understand this is important to you. And what I want maybe isn't as important to me. It's not worth right. the fight. But I just want to let you know that. You know what? I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to go with another one. One more basketball analogy. Okay. For a compromise accommodation thing. Sometimes, like you said, it's not really important to you, but it is important to the other person. In basketball, they have what's called a possession arrow. When they have ball gets tied up and the ref doesn't know who it is in high school. Okay, first time it's going to go to Kevin's team. The next time that happens, it goes to Melissa's team and it goes back and forth. So sometimes in marriage, like if you say that, like, all right, this really doesn't matter to me. So I'm going to give this to you. Mm -hmm. The next time that happens, I should be like, you know what? Last time I got whatever it was. I got the ability to have the apartment with the Mm -hmm. wash and dryer across. So now you're saying I want to go to Bali or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I really don't want to go. I should think back. Okay, the last time. She gave in. So to make things, it's not an exact compromise. Sure. But it feels more like we're in this together if the next time yeah. I relent and give something to you because Possession Arrow says I completely got what I wanted last time without you having, you know, getting kind of anything that you want. I think that's the scoreboard. And if we are both keeping track... Yeah, I think that is keeping the score. But we I actually keep th- the scoreboard. But though. I almost think that that's a healthy way of keeping it. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Because if I'm always the one accommodating and I'm constantly adding these check marks on my side and you're never doing anything, that's resentment. But it is if it is a dynamic where we are recognizing um, it's almost like an appreciation. I appreciate you right. for sacrificing for me. I appreciate you yes. for doing these things for me. The least I can do is also return that favor. We're doing that in our marriage right now. When we first started date night, I was like, I want to eat at all these cool yes. restaurants that yes. L.A. has to offer. And you were like, okay, what you really want to do is activities. So then we did that. Like we ate at all the places to eat. Mm -hmm. And now you're like, okay, Kevin, we have eaten all the foods. I want to do activities, very much cool activities. (laughs) I want to do pottery. I want to do ghosts. I want to make (laughs) pottery. I want to do paint and tip. So now I'm like, you know what? You you gave me three months of every day, all the places I want to try, crustacean and and the stinky rose, everything I wanted to try. So now I've I've you know done my thing for the next three months, whatever you want to do. I think that is a very healthy dynamic in a relationship. Yes. And I don't often th- I think the dynamic often um, falls in roles mm-hmm. where it's not dynamic where we're both giving and taking. It's more like I am the person that always gives and he is the person that always gets what he wants. And we've established that as our dynamic. Yes. And that's where the unhealthy scoreboard. You know what happens place. too? this happens in things that are. are <laughs> it's so funny how you can have a serious conversation about stuff that doesn't seem like it should be. Mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. When we travel with my kids, it is important to me that my kids have their own space. Yes. They have a door that closes because they don't never want to go to sleep when I'm tired. They listen to the TV on loud. They be laughing. <laughs> they be I, on vacation. I want I just want the door closed. It does not bother Melissa at all. It does all. not. Melissa can go to sleep with noise. Back to the TV thing. Mm-hmm. I cannot. <laughs> the kids just be. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that, Zay Zay? Ah. <laughs> so Melissa is also their mother. Because I'm like, man, I'm put these boys in their own room. Okay? They're older. Y'all be right across the <laughs> hall. Just don't let no man come in there and snatch y'all. <laughs> Melissa's like, I don't feel comfortable with the boys being separate from us. And I feel like I don't feel comfortable with the boys <laughs> being in a double bed right next to me because I don't want them that close. <laughs> so our compromise was either A, adjoining rooms. Adjoining room is A. Or B, big enough room that they can have their own That's space right. and we can close the door. So, but we really got into it over that mm-hmm. because I was like, man. Because it didn't bother you. It doesn't. And then in the room, when they're jumping around, being loud, and I'm trying to take a nap, and you can go to sleep, and I'm tired, and they don't know. And I'm sitting here looking at her sleep like, mm, does that feel good to be an REM sleep? Oh, I bet you'd like be that. Are you? Oh, look at you. And I'm frustrated at you. 
Right. Because I made this thing clear to you that it bothers me. It doesn't bother you. So it seems unfair that we're giving in totally to you because it didn't bother you in the beginning. Right, 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 right. That was a great example. And um, so now we put the boys in adjoining rooms or we buy rooms that are big enough to speak. And the other part of the compromise is that is more expensive. Yes, that's the part I do not like. But we're moving on. Or leave them with grandma and grandpa. Anything else you want to add? No, I honed it. Okay, that is it. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this episode of the podcast. This was a good episode. I hope you guys got some really good tips. We want to tell you about the Love Hour Conference. It is coming July 9th, 10th, and 11th in Atlanta, Georgia. My um, designer, I believe is what she calls herself, event planner, just sent me her full invoice <laughs> last night. And I was like, y'all need to buy some tickets, Kels. What is happening to my life? Um, so if you're interested in attending, it's going to be a great time. Um, the link will be in the description box, but you can also go to thelovehour.com. And that is it. Thank you so much to our sponsors. We had Honey, Legacy Box, Blue Chew, and Noom. We've covered all the bases. You can shop, get your life in order, and get memories for your grandmama. Okay. Anything else? Bye, cuz. All right. Bye.